You've read the title, I've been abused for about 17 years, and all of it is through psychological methods. So basically, I've been through a lot of traumatic experiences from my own father, okay? Let's just get that out of the way. And during that time, not a lot of good stuff happened. I don't remember a lot before I turned 16, but I remember is just very specific moments that happened. And throughout this video, I'll be reading from an old diary I've wrote on, which was online on Discord, which is really embarrassing to admit, but I used to share almost everything in a chat room to complete strangers online. Kind of, kind of embarrassing. So I'll be reading off of that for the things that I have said in the past. And but I couldn't talk about this before because due to court issues, the reason I'm bringing, bringing this up now is because the court issues has been um, done for quite a while and now I can talk about these freely. The reason I make this video is because I don't want the image of me looking perfect or happy all the time 24 seven like how most social media does online. And I don't want to have that happen for me. So I want to be vulnerable and talk about this as straightforward as possible without trying to break any community guidelines because some of the stuff that we talk about is quite not awesome. So yeah. At the convention, we were supposed to go and set up early in the morning. The entire family, we were vendors. We got up at around 5 or 4 a.m. to go set up. My dad was already in a bad mood. When we arrived at the convention at around 6 to 8 a.m., my dad got mad at us for not being there an hour before of what he said. When we were at our booth, my parents wanted us to help out. So a little bit of context for the between 8. So the convention started until like, like way, way later, like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. So like we still had like three to four hours to prepare. But since like my dad wants to be there way more earlier than these time frames, he still got angry, even though we set up on time and everything was fine. It was just it was just stressful if we didn't meet like his his unrealistic standards for our family during the time. Um, my parents wanted us to help out whenever we did something. It seems that we create bigger problems. So me and my little brother sat down doing nothing the entire time. By the time the convention started, my dad was having a bad vibe towards us, but not towards the customers. I eventually walked around with my little brother at one point. I still feel stressed out about it. I was waiting for my friend to arrive. I'm so glad he was going to make it. I couldn't handle being around my family. He got there after a while, but he got there. We had fun for a couple hours before they had to go. I walked around with my little brother again, going shopping around the vendors. It was a nice break from the parents. When the convention was closing, we were packing up. It took us to 12 a.m. to finish. Me and my little brother did nothing because we knew we would create a bigger problem. Once we left the convention, we went to go get dinner. I can't really go to conventions anymore with my dad because I'm afraid this is going to happen again. My parents were arguing about something. I don't remember. I remember it was scary. It was all a blur. All I had to do was wait, hear the arguing, and be afraid. Since me and my little brother didn't have a voice to say anything, we looked horrified. I think I remember it was something super fucking stupid. We were deciding on whether to go through the drive through or not. We looked ridiculous driving around the parking lot. My parents was basically saying no drive through drive through or something like that. The thing is that my dad was making a big fucking deal about it, like life or death situation. We parked a car because I think we were going to go inside. My dad said that he lost his appetite or something. My mom tried talking to him. My dad eventually said he was walking home alone. He left the car and left us alone in the parking lot. We all didn't believe what we saw. I was worried about a lot of things. I tried to toughen it out because I didn't want my loaded brother to be scared, but I couldn't. My mom started crying. Then I believe my loaded brother was. So much shit happened. So many questions came through my mind. My dad has a bad knee or hip or something. The walk home was a few miles. I wasn't sure he was going to make it. Was he going to be all right? Was my mom going to be okay? Is the little brother okay? What happened? Why did he leave the car? Why did I go to the convention? Was it all my fault? Was my little brother's fault? I was just asking questions I had little to no answers to. All I had to do was wait and see the answers myself. My mom was sobbing over what my dad did. We were driving away to go home. We saw him sitting alone at the bus stop while we were driving away. I was surprised. My mom didn't even try to pick him up. I didn't even recognize who my mom was. It was like as if I was kidnapped by people that I don't know and had no power to stop it from happening or escape the situation. Me and my little brother told her why she didn't pick him up. She said that she didn't want to pick him up. I tried being tough. I tried my best to not be scared so that little brother isn't scared, but I failed that. My mom asked if we were okay. I said I wasn't. I said I don't recognize her or my dad. Me and my little brother also said that we were scared that a divorce was going to happen. She said she might get a divorce. We didn't know how to react to any of this shit. All I was doing was sobbing in the car full of fear. She asked us some questions. I remember them, but I don't. I do remember being crying a shitload. God, I'm such a fucking pussy. Before we went to the house, she said she would pick up dad. We both said yes, but I was second guessing myself and my mom knew that. She called dad to ask him if he wants to get picked up. He didn't really have a great tone. He was like, what do you want? My mom said the boys were worried and if she should pick him up. He said that if she wants to, they were basically repeating until my dad hung up saying, I gotta go, my phone is about to die. My mom didn't want to pick him up. We went back home to pack up the convention stuff. My dad eventually pulled up with an Uber. I tried telling him to come and help us with the boxes. My mom said to stop what I was doing. 
We finished at around 12 or 1 in the morning. It was easy putting away the boxes. My mom said I did a better job than my dad, and I was like, what the fuck? About 10 a.m., woke around that time, and my, blood, my older brother started scolding my dad for what he has done. And this is one of the incidents that happened. Like, a lot of these occurrences, this is, like, one of the key points that I have, is a lot of these occurrences between, like, pointless arguments, really unrealistic standards for us, and if we don't even reach those standards, we get, like, the butt end of the stick. We just get treated like shit and harsh. Like, we just get, um like yelled at we get like scolded put down it's just not fun and then like when we feel bad we just get love bombed to the point where we feel like we're important and this toxic cycle keeps on happening and then i have a second on entry on here that i would like to go over because this is also one of the most biggest points of that happened in my life again i don't remember a lot of this stuff i use these diary entries to recall how i feel during the time and i how i relieve these emotions because I don't remember a lot of things before I turned 16. This is, I was on a camping trip before this and everything seemed fine and this happened right after the trip. Uh, stuff got intense. I heard my little brother crying. I thought to myself that he was laughing or crying. I check on him. Yeah, he was crying bad. I asked him what's wrong. He said my dad took away his monitor. Then I asked my dad what was going on. He said that he got hungry and asked my mom to make him something. Then she said, I'm going to bed, go ask her father. My little brother got into a grumpy mood saying, I don't want this, I don't want that. My dad said, if you don't want to eat, then go to bed. Later, my dad checked on him and he was on his PC. My dad took away his monitor and my brother was crying. Then he said that my mom was crying outside. I thought it was weird. I asked, why is she crying? His face had a weird reaction to when I asked why. He said that he said something that he shouldn't have had. Then my mom came back in, then I asked for her story. Then my dad got defensive over her story. She said that she told my little brother to ask my dad to make him something. While she was lying in bed, she heard my little brother was crying. She checked on him being curious on why he was crying. Then my dad started scolding her for no reason. After the story was over, my dad started crying for no reason. He never cries and cries like that. He asked me if I can leave. He looks like he was begging. It was awful. I said, do whatever he does to calm himself down. He gave me a hug and left. I processed whatever happened. Then my dad came back. I told him that it might be a giant misperception with things. And I tried telling him that my mom was checking on my little brother because of the past. It sounded like my older brother when he was younger crying. And it was some instinct thing. My dad was being defensive again, assuming my mom was tagging him as the bad guy. I tried telling him that what he did was right except the part where he was scolding my mom, but he wouldn't listen. He begged me to let him leave again, then I let him leave to go back to his room. He did say that he was done with it and he wanted a divorce. Again, like last time, I gathered my thoughts and realized there's a giant missed piece of the puzzle missing and I can't see the grasp onto it. The third time he came back to talk some more, I tried telling him about the perspectives and misperceptions. Again, he was being defensive. I sent a fear out of him. I wasn't sure what he was scared of, but there's something that he's scared of that I can't tell. I tried communicating him to him and try to understand his point of view of the story. I thought he was thinking he did the right thing. I automatically assumed that my mom assumed he was the bad guy. I asked him if that was true. He said, ask your mother. I said, I need to know if he thought this. My mom brought up that he did what's the right thing except the scolding thingy. I don't remember what happened next. Then again, he asked if he could leave. So the argument is over. And I said, sure. After that was over, I talked to my mom a little bit. I thought about the convo. Anyways, I was, I was like really trying to be like thinking and hardcore for this. I used to be a lot of delusional. I used to be really delusional back then. I used to take inherits traits from my own dad. He was into like conspiracy theories and about all these things. And then he was very like narcissistic, like bunch of self, like really big ego self-love. And I used to inherit that. I almost lost like friends at freshman year. So when I see like about like these stuff, these are part of my delusional thinking, I, th I believe. I don't think like this anymore. I'm glad it changed. I almost lost my friends over this and I'm glad of that encounter to change me as a person. At around three in the morning, a whole hour later, I feel so stressed out. My dad came back into my room. He told me a personal story, he told me stuff I don't know who to trust now. I don't know. I don't think I feel comfy talking to my family. I don't feel comfy talking to my personal friends. The only person I trust with all my life is one of my friends cause. Like I feel so horrible. I wish I could go back in time when things were simpler. I wish I didn't get myself involved with this. I don't feel all right. I don't feel safe. I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm really, really scared. Why did I get myself involved with this? I can't sleep. I don't feel hungry anymore. I feel horrible. I hate it. I want this to be over. Why did he bring up this story? I feel so out of place to put it up. I don't want to say the story because he said he don't want to tell anybody to keep that promise. Well, I'm going to keep it. Well, I'm not going to keep it anymore. And I kind of went on more time like rants. And yeah, it's it's really ugly looking at this. I don't like looking at this again. Well, I did say I was going to keep the promise and I'm going to break it. So this happened before I was born. Okay. Um, my dad told a story on how he hung out with my mom 
and then he hung out at my grandpa's house and then for no reason my grandpa started hitting my dad like hurting him like just beating him up and then my dad said he didn't fight back on purpose so that he gets respect for my mom and didn't want to hurt my grandpa and that was the story he brought up why did he bring that up in this moment after an argument between or a discussion between my mom about perspective i don't know it's really random the more i think about it that back then especially, especially for that now and what i was told from a different perspective from my mom's side i think either my grandpa or my mom i forgot who but what happened was um again before i was born a few nights before the incident occurred my mom was best friends with her cousin and i forgot what happened but my dad was really mad at my mom and he wanted to get revenge on her so what he did was when when my mom her co- her cousin which was her best friend during the time and my dad was at the apartment um my dad locked the cousin up in a room and did nasty things. Then the things didn't sit right after that point. My mom was unaware of what happened. She wasn't told of anything. So what happened was she, um, my grandpa called my mom like a few days later asking if she can talk by herself. My dad was aware of the actions he did and and then brought himself to to travel to my grandpa's place and during this time he, um he saw my dad and did what he did the same thing that my dad told me after that point he didn't tell me this either was my grandpa told my mom to go check on my dad so he doesn't get any like legal issues of like getting like you know beating up someone after that point my mom checked on my dad and my dad ripped out her hair um and that's what happened for that story again a lot of information left out for that and this all happened before i was born and it feels really devastating to my mind because i don't know who my dad is at this point because like Every like affection he gave to me felt sincere until like these incidents like were very common coming up like these really stressful incidents just for talking to my dad and just living this constant state of fear. But then also getting these like love bomb packages at the same time. But then there's also stuff like this where this traumatic experiences the traumatic experience he gave to my mom's cousin the tracks experience he gave to like a lot of people. Like what is the motives like? Am I just an asset to give him attention? Am I just an asset to, like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm only an asset for whatever he needs. It's like it's like a business exchange. That's what it feels like. And it's stressful. And, like, for, like, that happening before I was born, and just knowing, like, there's DNA genetics that's forever going to be a part of me that involves him with those nasty things sucks. Like, I know I'm never, ever going to do those things. But it sucks that I, it sucks that those genetics are forever going to be part of my body. And I just, if there was a way for me to get that part ripped out of me, I will, like, I want to. It's just so fucking unfortunate and sucks. It does so much damage to your mental. And again, with all these, like, trauma stuff, I can't go back and relive every single moment, but from these two encounters that I could list off, it really does a lot of damage to my mind, does a lot of trust issues, and really makes you live on edge. I feel like I have to be, like, perfect and flawless and satisfies other people's needs to avoid these stressful encounters. And I don't know how to live for myself, honestly. And then for 2020, for the legal issues I want to talk about now, for when I first started getting away from my dad. Um, at around this time in November, my dad was away with his family and my mom, brother and I were just chilling at the house, just existing, you know, being like just existing normally, just chilling. And then eventually out of nowhere, my dad randomly messaged family be like, hey, like I'm coming back today. 
I remember being so stressed out about this that I messaged my friends like, what do I do? I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm literally in class and he's about to come back and I don't want it to come back. Like, and this is all during like Zoom meeting time. And so my friend told me like, hey, just tell your teacher. I was like, that's embarrassing. I want to tell my English teacher. And then he was like, just, just tell your teacher, like, trust me on this one. So I asked my teacher to be in the breakout room and then I started crying like in front of her being like, I like my dad's like psychologically abusive. He's going to come back. I don't want to. And I don't know what to do. I'm so scared. And then just out of like, just like fear and like safety concerns, she gave me her personal phone number. She'd be like, like, if you need anything, just like, just let me know you're safe on that phone number just for like, like legal issues or something. I don't fucking know. Like it was, it was good. It was good to know that like somebody cared for my safety. Anyways, uh, she, he didn't come back that day, but he came back the next day. I don't know where abruptly out of blue without my mom's permission. And he just kind of announced like, Hey everyone, I'm back. And the first thing I did was went in my room and started playing Call of Duty Zombies. Now that might sound really funny at first, but that was like the only way I feel like I could be protected. Sounds really crazy, but he can't really yell at me if he thinks somebody else I'm with is in a call. And then that puts him at risk of somebody thinking he's in like a really bad man, like looks like a bad person. A lot of the times with my accounts with my dad, I had to do like death note, like thinking type shit. Like I'm not even kidding. Every time, like every time I do an encounter with my, with my dad, I have to like, I feel like I had to like do psychological tricks back just to like showcase that my my dad acts the way he does to prove my mom that like he should leave him. It, it feels like a really fucked situation and I really don't want to relive it like ever again. Basically what happens like I used to have like a whole chart on like like things that like I could like list out. It's really it's really fucked. I don't know how to describe it. It just feels like I have to live like my life as like death note type of thinking just to like showcase like one like like just to showcase like how like fuck the whole situation is. I don't know how to describe it. Anyways, so during 2020, my dad came back. I don't know where abruptly said, so like, hey, everyone, I'm back. So I went to my room and started playing Call of Duty Zombies. And after that point, um, I knew that he didn't want to be seen as like a bad person. So like, if I if he thinks I'm in a call with somebody, like while I'm playing a game, then he will he won't act out and like act all like irrational and like messed up. So after that point, um, my brother also went in my room and then my dad came in saying like, hey, like I'm back. And I was like, OK, he said, hey, I'm back. I'm like, all right. And he said, hey, I'm back. I'm like, OK, so what he's trying to do at this point was ask that or try to make you say like, oh, welcome back. Oh, I love you, dad. Oh, I like, get that like affection and like that, like that kind of like security that like, oh, he's allowed to come back. I didn't want to give that to him at all. So what I did was I sat back saying, you know, I'm not going to say it. Right. And then my dad's got all like me like all mean and like butthurt and like oh like why you take wrong like, blah, blah, blah. like i forgot what he said and then i just said like i don't know what the fuck i did wrong like what, what did they do wrong like like just asking like what did i do wrong I, I don't know what i did wrong i didn't do anything wrong and then my brother was like in the room all like scared looking and then my dad saw him and he was like hey you want to look at my souvenirs and he was like oh yeah sure so they left the room after that point um like they went to check out souvenir stuff my mom told him like hey let's let's go outside for a little bit i'm gonna discuss with things with you so my mom discussed stuff with him about like the household. He asked, she asked if he could leave again so that, you know, we could have the house. We have a lot of space, uh, three bedrooms, you know, for all of us to stay to have in while we take time away from him. And he said no. So we did. So we left. I had a bag packed. I packed my computer, my monitors, and we left. And I remember the car ride, just leaving the house. My mom was like crying and sobbing, like didn't know what to do, how to react to anything. And then I was like trying to go to my girlfriend's house, just calling like her parents, just be like, hey, like, can I like stay for the night? And then so I sent my girlfriend's place for the night and I was just processing everything. I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck is going on? And then I set up my computer at the next day on her house temporarily to go do Zoom meeting stuff. It was not it was it was it was scuffed. It was really funny. I'm grateful that they helped out. And then after that point. I went back to my mom's friend's place because that's where we're staying at. And that was I felt peaceful there for a little bit. And then after that point, my the next day of that, my mom's account bank account got drained. No money. Absolutely. Nothing. So we literally had no money and we can't go back to our own house. We were just staying at like our friend's house. So we literally had nothing to go for. And after that point, we didn't know what to do. So we were kind of like low key panicking or whatever. But we a fuck it, we ball, you know, the saying. Um, Eventually, mom started get, applying for jobs, started working at places. My brother was working at like a grocery store at the time, helped my mom get a job from like, you know, family ties, you know, the freaking, you know, workplaces are. So she got a job. It was pretty nice. Oh, no, she was working with my friends, her friend, her friend. 
it was her friend and then she applied to like my brother's job place which is pretty chill and after that point after a while my mom filed out an emergency restraining order so that my dad could get kicked out of the house and eventually we would get our house back and then now that's where we're living at right now and during that time there were some complications like my mom was out late night just trying to process everything and then she didn't really communicate with us about like when she'd get back which i have no hard feelings for because of just like i can't imagine being a single parent and like going through all that fucking experience all by yourself and like not knowing how to like do that because my mom had like i've been like it's like i've been like a full-time mom for like again like like my entire life up to that point so like that's a lot of like things to process and like with all attention like my daddy gave to her like like who's going to fulfill that void like it's it was hard to like process that like but like it's still like it's still like it was still hard for like me and my younger brother in the time because like we didn't have like like mom to support us because we were so used to that she was there all the time and now she's gone like what the fuck do we do so like we had to like learn like new life skills so abruptly out of the blue that really like staggered us a lot it's really hard to describe it at the same time we were getting messages from my dad being like oh like i never left you and i'm like yeah i know i left you there's a difference and which at some point he started sending some like weird messages at one point he sent them like sending like the final straw for me was when he sent an image of himself making out with a girl which i thought was fucking weird to show me and eventually i texted back like please don't text me back i don't want to see these ever like i don't want to see these messages ever again which is around 2023 christmas um, and then I haven't talked to him ever since because I was still like, I still like missed a part of him that like he cared for me when I was younger. But I feel like that, I feel like with those knowledge I know now and the process and the stuff that happens like when I was a teenager, it just felt like it just felt like 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 that, like that part, that part of him is not there anymore. I felt like in a way like like that part that I knew like died. But at the same time, I feel like that was all a lie just to like it was like there just to, you know, like in a way to like step me but also like did it seem like as authentic as i think now because i don't know what the true motives is like does he truly love me just for the person who i am or does he love me because of the attention i give to him i can never tell even if he tells me right now like for like just because of who i am in the words i i can't i don't believe that i feel like i feel like at this point actions speak larger for words like people can say whatever they want but like the actions will speak larger for for itself to me um and right now like and then during the time of that, um, 2020, I had to choose between either go to college or get a job because I have to help my mom pay for money. Like uh, it, it was bad. We were so down bad that I had to help pay for money stuff. And it was a lot of struggle because I felt like this is still the point of like, I need to like live life for others. I know of course like, I have to get a fucking job and like get fucking like employed in the future. But like I just, and the, the college stuff too, but like it was hard trying to process what the fuck i've been through and then starting college or even like a new job thing while learning while having all this stumbled on top of myself it felt like i couldn't get a break and like get my time to give myself time to decompress for anything it just felt like it just felt like everything just like hit and like flooded i don't i know i don't want to complain be like oh like like oh like i like get a fucking job like just you you you, you lazy ass fuck it, it just it just feels like with everything that i've been through within that relationship and also everything that's been toppled upon and just like the struggles of like being 17 years old going to college for the first time and then just like the whole, the whole new experience getting like paid to go to college and then you then learning that fun it, it was a lot of life skills to learn after that traumatic experience while trying to process everything and trying to get help it, it was it was like i'm entering adulthood while trying to like learn how to process everything and try to learn adult stuff it was really hard to process everything and I still, I still feel like I'm still stagnant from that, from the past experience and trying to deal with like the, the mental, emotional stuff. Cause I feel like I'm not getting as enough support as I want to just because of the whole like family incident. I feel like that whole, that whole, that whole thing fucked up my mind. I feel like I'm only seen as an asset than a person because I don't feel like I'm supported for the person who I am. I feel like I'm only supported for what I give to the family. That's the kind of thing that I'm feeling right now. I know like during the time it was only for, it was literally because I need to help out the family or else we all go fucking homeless. But like, I still feel like that has still carried over to my mind of like, I need to bring in money. I'm an asset and I need to help give us a roof over our head because of financial gains. I don't fucking know. Or like attention I give. Like it's, it doesn't feel like it's affection. I just feel like it's just, I just feel like I'm just an asset just to satisfy other people's needs than like, or carry the characteristics that they like about me. It's, it's really weird. 
and also go to some personal stuff stuff too like like my i my gender i didn't know that stuff because during the time when i was 14 i came out to my family my mom told my dad and then he said i failed my son that was not fun to go through so <laughs> you know i bet there's some fucked up shit and i'm still here um i guess not sure how long though but you know that's that's cool um so yeah that's basically what's been what's happening i wanted to update y'all about what i've been through this it's really hard to process everything at this point in my life because i don't know what to do i feel like i've tried everything like like therapy and like antidepressants and all this kind of jazz i it still feels like i haven't recovered or helped or pro i don't know what's wrong it's, it feels like i've tried everything and nothing's really working i'm just I'm just I'm trying like it is what it is and just trying to continue on from it. I really want to make more videos and upload stuff, but I feel like I'm in a bad headspace all the time at this point. Like I'm I don't like I I think the last time I was happy was like summer of last year. Like I'm not even kidding. I think that was the last time I genuinely felt like happy, like for like a long period of time. After that point, I just feel like just misery. Um But yeah, I've I want to make more uploads. I want to make more content. I want to make more videos, but I feel like in the headspace I'm in, I just can't do that. It's really hard. The whole issue I have is just getting, it's being consistent. And the reason I have been consistent is because of these past traumas has been affecting me and I need to f work it out. So I, mean, I need to get better time actually get a hold of my life and get control of myself and do what makes me happy than satisfy other people's needs. Cause I'm tired of satisfying other people's needs and I need to figure that out. And this is becoming a yap session. Fuck. Anyways. I hope y'all understand. I don't know if this will help anyone or if this helps myself, but I want to get this out because I don't want to be seen as like perfect all the time on social media because I really fucking hate that in social media landscape. I'll see y'all later. Bye.